That's uncomfortable. There we go. Settle down. Uh, alrighty. Let's do this thing in three, two. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Tuesday. It's January 26th, 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. You can go lay over there, too. That's fine as well. All right. This robe is a little bit shorter than the other one and does not work well when she wants to sit on my lap. Not to mention the, the fabric is terry cloth and she needs at it and gets stuck and gets really mad at me that she can't retract her claws. We've, we've literally had fights about this robe because she claws it. And by fights, I mean she gets mad when I gently remove her claws from my robe. Well, good morning and how are you? I hope you had a good Monday. I hope you had a good kick off to the week. Hope it was productive and happy and active and I don't know, what, whatever the things are that we want to have in day. Mine was. A couple client meetings, good ones. Got all my work done. I was done at 3.45. I'm getting better at being okay with being done with work before four o'clock. Four o'clock is the outer limit. And I feel guilty. You know, it's funny, like I almost set myself up for failure. I feel guilty if I have work that I didn't get done and I stop. And I feel guilty if I stop because I got all the work done. Well, that's not gonna be sustainable. It's going well. Uh, the big thing I did yesterday was I got the formatting dialed in for the book, the novel. Um, this morning I will be incorporating Andrew's edits and suggestions. And, uh, cat, let go. She's stuck to the couch. See, there you go. Could you let go of the couch, please? There you go. Anybody want a cat? You stay over there. Clearly we're not in, the, in sync this morning. There have been times I've woken up, she's tried to, instead of jumping on the bed, which is not that difficult for her, she can do it. Um, it's not like it's a tall bed or anything. She'll try to like claw and hoist herself up, but she gets stuck. And then she's got her front paw and then she'll slide back. So her back paws are on the, on the floor. Her front paws are like stretched out, but she's clawed in and she doesn't have the leverage to do anything about it. And she'll start meowing. So I'll wake up and I'll grab her and I'll go to detach her. And she starts hissing at me and sometimes bites me. <sighs> Animals. Yeah, so books on track. Uh, what else? Just other client work. Got a call, got an email from somebody, another project. I mean, the, just the consulting work is, is doing well. And that's because it, it, the term I've learned most recently is network effect, which I, I'm, I'm interested in. And maybe I'll spend some time doing some more research, but the, the gist of it is that there's a direct relationship between the spread of something could be something, uh, it, it may even have something to do with uh, infection rates, but I don't think so. I think that's a different algorithm. Um, but this was used to, in the context was to describe uh, the adoption of social networks. That it's, um, the rate of spread is, is related to the square of participants, something like that. The more clients I have, the more clients I'm going to get. It's pretty 
cut and dry that way. Uh, we did the, the next step, the prep work for the, there's a new client coming in through Black Belt Social Media, which is sort of the collaborative project between my consulting work and Whistlekick. I'm going to be helping a martial arts school in Florida with their social media. I love doing that stuff. I love, I love helping schools. I love mar helping martial arts schools. I would love to have I don't know, a few hundred clients in that program. That would be awesome. Because nobody's going to do it as affordably as we do. I mean, we're, we're kind of killing it with the pricing. This person's getting, what are they getting? Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, same posts, but five days a week. Mostly original for a hundred bucks a month. It's easy. It's a no brainer. Nobody touches that. So if you or your martial arts school or you know one, send them my way. Blackbeltsocialmedia.com. <sighs> so that was yesterday. What's today? Today's Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday means interviews. I have one this afternoon. I think it's at three. I don't know what else is happening. I have a client call at one. No, at 12. I think it's at 12, 1230. I don't know if I have anything before that. So I'll just chip away at the stuff I got to do. There's all kinds of stuff to do. There's always all kinds of stuff to do. I gotta water the plants. Quiet day. Went to the gym last night and I was just about to leave and I overheard uh, three guys that I, one of them owns the gym and, and two other guys that I've had a number of conversations with and they were chatting. I went, I walked over to say goodbye but it turned into a conversation. They, they were talking about um, Elon Musk's Neuralink, the, the brain implant, and they were talking about future potential of that. And it turned into this really interesting conversation with the four of us about uh, the philosophy of artificial intelligence and digital versus analog world, and it was kind of neat. Um, and they were all in differing states of agreement. And there, were, there was one guy who was completely disagreed with me. And it made for some good conversation. It wasn't, it wasn't argumentative. It was, just, it was nice to talk about something that we had opinions on and even some substance and some ability to discuss. But, not, but nobody left feeling... Well, I, I can't speak for them. I didn't leave feeling like anyone was um, attacked. It's a really interesting conversation. I enjoy it. I, lo I like those conversations. I don't have a lot of friends I can have those conversations with. Most of my friends don't want to debate the merits of artificial intelligence. And those that do... can't usually express their opinions well. Most people can't express their opinions very well about many things. They don't, the, the, um, the ability to form an argument on the fly, to explain something, to make it relatable, it's difficult. And honestly, a lot of that has come from whistlekick, from my needing to come up with ways to, to talk about things on the fly and explain things. Forgot to mention yesterday, Larry King passed away. One of the interviewers that I really look up to. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, his longevity. He, was in, he interviewed people for, what, 60 years? Um, and two, he 
is the only person I know other than myself who intentionally doesn't prepare for the same reason that I don't prepare. I don't prepare for interviews because the guests, I'm sorry, the audience doesn't prepare for interviews. I don't want them to feel like they're listening to an inside conversation. I want to put myself in their place. That's my job, is to help the guest tell their story to the audience. It's not about me. I'm just a facilitator. <sighs> Yesterday's episode with uh, Yusuke Nagano, I think that's his last name. Very well received, and he's got a big YouTube following. He promoted it, um, or really told his followers about it, so that's cool. So maybe we'll get some new people coming into Whistlekick and woke up this morning to a message on Instagram from somebody who just started a, a martial arts podcast and they wanted to pick my brain, which I'm always happy to do. There was nobody there helping me on the podcast side when I started. I had to figure out so much of this stuff by myself. And somebody else is going to make a show? Unless you're trying to make the same show that we are, which would be silly, because if you got a big head start, uh, you know, it means somebody else making another show. I would love for somebody else to make another cool podcast. I've, there are plenty of them out there. Let's make more. The more great martial arts content out there, the better it is to be a martial artist. Right. It's kind of like if you, if you think about TV or movies. Maybe not right now, right now, but up until about a year ago, it was kind of a, a, a golden age because we had so many great options, so many movies coming out, streaming, in the theater, lots of TV, like just your, your options for good and even great content, I mean, they've never been greater, never been more. We don't have that on the martial arts side. We definitely don't have that on the martial arts podcast side. You know, we've got some, there's some great shows out there, and I'm not just talking about what we do. I love what Jared does. I love what Anna does. I love what Ian does. We need more. We need more podcasts. And if anybody out there wants me to go on your podcast, somebody else's podcast, I'm game. Let's do it. I like talking. <laughs> I'm using these. <sighs> mm. So the question is, what creative project am I going to tackle once the novel's live? Which will be by the end of the week. I committed to the end of the month. Remember what I said by Christmas? So I blew that deadline. But it'll still be a novel start to finish released in 10 weeks. Maybe 11. Less than, less than three months. I bet I could do that again. I bet I could do it faster next time. Bet I could. Um... Yeah, so I don't know what else I'm going to do with that creative time in the morning. Maybe I'll... I don't want to start the next novel yet. I want, I want it, this one to get out there. I want people to, to read it. I want to get some feedback. I want to see if what I put out there landed right. Do I, you know... Do I need to make some adjustments to the characters? Or just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. I was going to do a video game. Decided that wasn't worth the effort and the investment. So no video games yet. But beyond the novel, we have one, two, three other books going on right now. There's uh, the rewrite of the Master Hopkick origin story, which Jenny's doing a great job on. Uh, there's the book the mass market book that we're working on called 12 Months to Health, which is going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, there's the book version of Two Minute Martial Arts. Lots of books. We're making content, y'all. Uh, 
Yeah, I think those are the books. Yeah, we're only working on four books right now. <sighs> I don't think I have anything else to say. So let's see what you all have to say. What's in here? What am I talking about? What are you talking about? Zap, die bugs die. All right. On this day in 1925, Oscar winning actor Paul Newman was born. Many people know Paul Newman for films such as The Long Hot Summer and Cool Hand Luke. What people do not always know is that in 1956, he starred in a film that is considered a classic in boxing cinema. The film Somebody Up There Likes Me is the biopic of boxer Rocky Graziano. According to BoxingScene.com, Graziano was one of the most popular fighters of the 40s. And I consider boxing to be a martial art. Not everyone does. It doesn't always have to be. But if you, if you look at, you know what? Go watch Rocky. Tell me that that's not, tell me that he wasn't a martial artist. Tell me he didn't grow as a result of his training and his competition and his investment in that skill set. Tell me that, oh, what's the, what's the old dude's name? His coach, the little dude. Tell me that's not a, a quintessential teacher-student martial arts relationship. <sighs> the best thing you can give yourselves is the gift of possibility. And the best thing you can give each other is the pledge to go on protecting that gift in each other as long as you live. Good morning, Stacy. <sighs> the gift of possibility. Possibility, to say it another way, hope. Hope is critical. Without hope, we fall apart. One of the things I learned very early on in martial arts was that the most dangerous person is someone with nothing to lose. If you consider the scenario, consider violent scenarios. The more likely someone has something to lose, Let me say that the opposite way. The less someone has to lose, the less they're going to care about taking it too far. Right? If someone is down to their last dollar, car and home, been repossessed, they don't have a family, they're hungry, what are they going to do? It doesn't matter. Whatever they think is necessary. Versus someone who has a home and a family and a good job. They're not going to risk all that. Or they are less likely to risk that with violence. So we can flip that a little bit. What's the opposite of, or if we say, I'm stumbling on my words. Hold on, coffee. Someone who has nothing to lose is also someone who lacks hope. Hope, possibility, right? Those are kind of interchangeable words. When you give someone the gift of possibility, you are giving them hope. You are giving them something that may keep them from sliding or making poor decisions. There are times where I, I, I think I, I could say I do this, that I gift people possibility, whether it's uh, through collaboration on a project or... when I counsel people, something that I, I really enjoy doing. Um, fun fact, if the world had turned in a slightly different way, I might have become a school guidance counselor. I like helping people. I had a very formative school guidance counselor as a kid, um, Mr. Holt. I haven't thought of Mr. Holt in years. We used to build models. 
He was a good man. Treated me well. I'm really thankful for the, the time that we spent. I don't remember much of it, but it was like second grade primarily, first, second, maybe some third grade. That was most of it. The gift of possibility. If you have no enemies, you have no character. Taking a stand always creates opposition. This is one that I've been learning to embrace. If everyone's happy with you, you're not pushing the envelope. If people aren't resistant to what you're doing, if some portion of the population doesn't point at what you're doing and say, this is ridiculous, it's never going to work, you're not dreaming big enough. And it's something that I'm getting better at getting over. I catch flack almost every day from somebody or something, whether it's uh, you know, a, a post that we put out or you know, maybe a video on my personal YouTube channel or something. And I used to engage and I used to get upset and I used to feel bad. And now I rarely engage and I get less upset. Not at the point where I've completely shed caring about what other people think, but I don't care as much. I know we're on the right path. I know when we're doing the right thing versus the wrong thing. I know when somebody's just trying to take out their poor feelings about themselves on someone else. And I just happen to be in the crosshairs at times. Delete, block, easy. So let's look at it the other way. If you look at your life, and nobody around you is unhappy with something that you're doing, you're probably not living to your potential. You're probably not pushing the boundaries. You're not, you may not be growing. What demographic is most universally uh, uh, though often quietly, seen with frustration. Kids. Kids grow rapidly, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. That's a really frustrating process to be around, isn't it? As a parent or as an instructor. So if you look around and the people around you are never frustrated with you, they're never upset with you, if you never make a misstep, are you growing? Are you getting better? Are you doing more? Maybe not. Take a look at that. I don't mind being the contrarian. I don't mind doing things that others aren't willing to do. Somebody's got to. Dreams without movement are delusions, escapes, kids play. You have to put your feet into your dreams if they're ever going to be reality. The dreamers we know and love today are the ones who worked the hardest. Paul Newman. Media and social media and ego have created this belief that if you put together the right plan, you don't have to work hard, that, that magic just happens. Yes, there are opportunities for efficiency. Yes, you can become more efficient. Yes, there are paths that take less time than others. But we're not talking, you know, to learn this skill on this path takes a day and this path takes a year. It's not that, it's a year versus a year and a week. Right? These are small percentage differences. And so many people spend far more time looking for the efficiency than they will save utilizing the efficiency. 
throughout history, we, we have these quotes, these writings from people just saying, just start, just do it, just get going, just find the first step on the path, whatever it is. And yet we have so many people who hang back and they look and they watch and they don't get started. Maybe you go in the wrong direction. That's okay, at least you're moving. At least you say, okay, that's the wrong direction versus hanging back and waiting. Now, are there times to wait and watch and, and be smart? Yeah, you can be patient. But patience doesn't necessarily mean standing still. In fact, it rarely does. It's, a, it's still movement because you're exploring, you're understanding, you're learning. You gotta dig in, you gotta find what's what. I feel like we're on the verge of, of, of a pretty big, big breakthrough in terms of our exposure to the world here at Whistlekick. Um, I don't know what's gonna lead to that. But at some point, somebody's gonna come to me and, and say, you know, how does it feel to be you know, this successful so quickly? And I'm gonna remind them that the first research for this company started in 2007. Eight? This was, this is a long time coming. A lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of sweat, a lot of frustration and long nights. We're working hard and we've got some good things going. And when you look at any success story and, and honestly the best podcast, if you're interested in this stuff, if you're interested in how organizations get to this point, mostly businesses, how I Built This. It's a podcast, um, comes from NPR, available everywhere. And what I like about the format of the show is that inevitably it leads to a lot of questions and, and conversation around how things got started. So you hear about um, you know, Instagram starting out as other things and pivoting and pivoting and this one random idea filters on photos that led to something massive and a billion dollar exit. Wow, cool. But the key was they just kept trying, they kept trying, they kept throwing things at the wall. What's gonna work? What's gonna stick? What has legs? So whether we're talking about training, aka show up, put in the time, do what you can, get better, or business, show up, put in the time, do what you can, get better, you still gotta do those things. There's no real shortcut. Our primary YouTube strategy is literally me on the couch in a bathrobe, and yet you're watching it. Why? Because for some of you, this is worth your time. Not everybody, but that's okay, right? We keep trying new things. We keep finding ways forward, because that's what we can do. And our last quote for the day from Paul Newman, a man can only be judged by his actions and not by his good intentions or his beliefs. I completely disagree. In fact, I think we talked about that yesterday and how strongly I disagree. But I will agree that actions are critical. They are important. And it doesn't surprise me that an actor would find so much value in action. Effort matters, but results matter. And depending on what the thing is, sometimes one matters more than the other. If, uh, yeah, I think we'll just leave it there. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> All right, I hope you have a great day. I'm trying not to sneeze. It's like stuck. I hate that. Now there's a yawn. Kind of a weird, weird sensation is that. Half sneeze, half yawn. I didn't like it. I hope that doesn't happen again. I hope you have a great day. I hope you will leave me things to talk about tomorrow. Leave questions or comments under the comment section of all places. Wow, right? Uh, once this show closes, 
Remember, we do the show weekday, 6.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time here on YouTube and catch it later in audio form. Shout out, thank you, as always, to Frank for making sure I've got stuff to talk about for taking care of stuff on the back end. I appreciate you, my friend. If you're new, subscribe, turn on notifications. Help us out with the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick or making a purchase at whistlekick.com using the code FIRSTCUP15. Gets you 15% off. Um, oh, and one last little bit. We've been selling more training programs, so they are going to get bumped up in version. I've got some changes I'm going to go through and implement over the next few weeks, which means what? A price increase. So if you've been waiting to get one of those programs, do it now. Price is going to go up on all of them. And we may see the first hybrid. I got some stuff playing around with that, but more to come. Thanks, everybody. I'll talk to you. Talk to you soon. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Peace.